Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland, and this is Boring Objects. Hope you're well and all that. So, I'm going to today, yeah, I'm going to talk about ovens. Ovens. Now, I've used a few different ovens over the years. Probably the first oven I can remember using. Well, it wasn't that I was using it, but I used to, when, when I was a child, probably around the ages of nine plus, I... My dad used to like to have me and my brothers doing manual work around the house or preferably in the garden, you know, doing like moving one dirt pile from one end of the garden to the other for no apparent reason. His logic or his philosophy was holidays are for working. But so, hey. Uh, and we used to do stuff like that. What I did, I thought I was going to decided to manipulate the situation because didn't really want to be outside in the horrible weather and digging and like for just for just pointlessly doing stuff like that. So what I did is I pretended to be interested in what my stepmom was doing in the kitchen. And she used to bake quite a lot, make cakes and stuff like that. So I would help her instead of helping my dad. Which meant I could be in the warm. And I could look at my brothers getting wet and getting tired and filthy, dirty and I could wait until they looked in and I could stick my tongue out at them. That was the highlight of the day, really. I think their highlight of the day was later on getting me back by punching me. <laughs> so I used to pretend to be interested in cooking and baking and stuff in order to escape being outside, digging and weeding. And all those other pointless activities that really aren't needed in a garden. You know, there's things like weed killer that you can put down. You don't need to have lots of flowers and stuff if you don't need them. But, you know, it's just a personal preference. I think if I had my own garden, it just... It's not that I would concrete it. But I might. Just have a patch of grass, you know? A bit of grass. Lots of flowers. Well, if nature provides flowers, then goody, goody, goody. But if it doesn't, then it doesn't. I'm not that bothered, really, about flowers. I could always go to the shop and buy flowers. Or just wait until it's night time and steal flowers from next door's garden. Or from the local graveyard. I mean, it's loads of flowers around that are free. So, not that I would do anything like that. But I'm just saying, you know, if I was that way, um, that way minded. Which I'm not. And, so, you know, I would pretend to be interested in cooking and baking. When the reality is, the only thing I liked about cakes was putting them into my tummy num, num. so uh, I guess I did help to bake you know I learned how to do stuff like that and I it's a skill I've never used um, but I don't suppose I'm not sure if I really had much to do with the actual oven itself we got on on first name terms but I didn't, 
I think I was quite young and I think my stepmum wasn't sure whether I'd uh, be able to handle the oven in a safe manner, which was expected. And I mean, I did burn myself a few times. I remember I'd burn myself and later in the evening, my dad was kind of arguing about whether it was safe for me to be in the kitchen if I was going to, you know, end up burning myself. And my stepmom said, well, it's natural for people to burn themselves on the oven. You know, there's two of us in there. The kitchen is not huge. And uh, it's it's bound to happen occasionally. You get a little burn on the oven. And my dad said, yeah, but on his tongue. How did he get burnt on his tongue? How's that an accident? And they both laughed. And they started uh, doing the can-can dance for some reason. It was quite popular back then. So Bad Manners uh, had a song out. And it was like, uh, it was. I think it was called the Can Can. So they played out very loud. It was a little bit like musical chairs sometimes because when the song came on the radio, no matter what they were doing, they'd stop and they'd start doing the Can Can dance. So after one incident, um, you know, my 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 stepmom told my dad that. We'd have to stop uh, playing the car in the radio. The car radio in the car. The car radio in the car. As opposed to the bicycle radio in the car. Because you can get bike radios, you know. But I just... It's a bit loud. Because if you've got the wind and the traffic. and You need to have it on quite loud volume. And that just doesn't seem fair on other people. To be forced to listen to your specific taste in music. Although back then there was only three different radio channels and uh, so there wasn't a lot of choice. Although we did have the pirate radios um, which used to be these pirate radios would be a pirate channel and there'd be boats that would be anchored in the sea and it was illegal but they used to play music and stuff and we were able to listen to it um i think what i forget the name of one of them uh what was it oi oi captain i think that's one of them and uh, where's my parrot that was another one. Stop treading on... Yeah, stop treading on my foot with your big wooden peg. That was a long title for a radio station. So... That was probably my first experience with an oven. The second experience with an oven probably was when I worked in a bakery. When I was about... 13 maybe yeah 13 ish and although I didn't I didn't have a lot of much of a relationship with the actual oven itself I just f felt we liked different things we just didn't really click um, but sometimes uh, the the owner the the boss of the little bakery because it it was a bakery and a restaurant and the restaurant would sell baked goods at the counter at the front of the restaurant. Which seemed to make sense to me because if it had been at the back of the restaurant it would have meant people traipsing through and possibly kind of interfering with those that were trying to have a nice restauranty meal at their tables. Plus, I suppose, the there was a window display which was uh, very popular f with wasps. And it was nice. Because I always decided, because I've always been, I've always been 
I've had a lot of respect for wasps taste in cakes. So, you know, if I go into a bakery or a shop or something like that, I always cho choose the cake where the wasps are most um, like hanging around, laying their eggs or whatever they do, making love to the sponge. I always choose that particular cake because then I know that I'm going to enjoy it because I have a very similar taste to wasps. Um, also, I like honey. And you might think, well, like, what's that got to do with wasps? And I, my answer is, well, wasps like honey. And some people confuse that with bees. Bees don't like honey. Bees produce honey. They don't like honey. That's what bees poo out. They poo out honey. Wasps just like to eat it. So, you know, I'm like a wasp in that way. And uh, when I was a kid, I had a hell of a sting. So, well, it was a stick with a sharp edge, but yeah, kind of a, a sting, kind of. And when I was working in the bakery, it was called the Bakehouse. And there was like an e a little e entrance to the side of the restaurant. And you wouldn't know it was there unless you knew it was there. And it there was a gate, just a gate, and you'd walk in there. You'd open the gate. It had a like a, just a standard gatey thing, you know, the like the metal thing that you push down and it opens. It's a standard gate, nothing special. I'd go in there and. That's where the bakehouse was. It was always warm, which is nice. Apart from in the summer, when I guess you don't really want to be in 100 degree, degrees heat when it's uh, hot outside. But I, in the winter, oh, it's lovely. A bit strange, though, coming out of there to snow and ice and... And because it was on the seaside, you'd have that cool air. So even in the summer, on a like an average day, it would be nice and cool. And, ooh, quite nice. And that was probably one of my favourite jobs I ever had. The only problem, really, was I had to start very early in the morning. I think Sunday, I'd work a Saturday and Sunday morning, you know, during the during the year, apart from holidays, and then I'd work every day. So in the summer holidays, I'd work probably seven days a week. And I think I was earning like 40 pence an hour or something like that. So it was pretty good. I reckon I reckon I could earn £20 a week with a full week probably not probably about £15 a week with a full week's work never been so excited and I had this little routine when I would finish work and they'd pay you every day they'd pay me every day as well and You take your little wage, uh, your little hour slip up to the counter where they sold the cakes and the donuts. Oh, I loved filling the donuts. There was, there was two jobs I loved, uh, three, three. Three different jobs that I liked the most in that job that I had. Three different tasks, I guess you should call them. The first one was breaking the eggs. I loved breaking the eggs. And because it wasn't, you know, like if you were at home baking, you break maybe two or three eggs or four eggs. This was hundreds of eggs. <laughs> it was really good. 
and I learned to break two eggs at the same time, like one with each hand without getting any um, shelling. Now, to be fair, if you're baking on such a, a big level, you know, quite making so many uh, loaves of bread and cakes and pastries and whatever, a little bit of shell doesn't really, it's not really noticed, as opposed to if you're just making one cake. I guess it's like, it's like urinating if you urinate in a, a swimming pool it's not noticed because it spreads um, unless you've got that that dye that kind of makes it go green or red or whatever but they didn't have that when I was a kid pretty sure and so that you can get away with it in a big swimming pool but I don't know, in a I don't know a sink or something, it's more noticeable. <laughs> it's more um I suppose the fact that you're sitting in a sink urinating or standing on a chair urinating into a sink in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, I did get did get caught a few times. I mean, during science lessons, they had sinks in there, and I thought everyone would be too busy and interested in what the teacher was saying, because he was talking about volcanoes and volcanic ash and stuff like that, and so I thought. I'll just have a quick, you know, go to the toilet in the sink, as you do. Everybody noticed. Everybody. But that's not really got much to do with ovens, has it? So I had... Oh, my other favourite jobs, my other favourite tasks in the bakery. The second favourite was... um, I've forgotten what it is now. What was it? I was going to say collecting my money, but that's not really a a job, is it? Filling the donuts... Well, making the donuts. Because they had me filling the donuts with jam... And then sprinkle them, you know, rolling around in a a big bowl of uh, sugar. And then they allowed me to actually cook the donuts, which is you just fry them. Stick them in a frying, yeah, just fry them. And it's very easy. And they smell so good. So, so, so good. And the smell, the smell just of them on their own. When they're hot, is beautiful, much nicer than when they're cold. Because they're they're crispy and they you know when they're cold they can get a little bit soggy, especially once they've um, they're filled with jam. But initially, if you eat one that's cooled down enough in order for you not to burn your tongue or whatever part of your body you're using to eat it. Lovely, very crispy. Mm, mm, mm. So I used to enjoy, really enjoy filling it with jam. And there was this pump, and it looked a little bit like a big tin tin opener did. I'm just thinking, I'm just remembering that. I was struggling to, to, to fill them with jam and they did say that's a tin opener. But they the actual jam thing also looked like a tin opener. It was this big long thing sort of that used to be able to fold down and it had a like a nozzle at the top which could turn. That didn't do anything, it just it's like a little handle. 
and you could just push it down and squeeze and the jam would squirt. You have to put the the end of that nozzle bit into the actual donut, otherwise it wouldn't go in. It just it just it'd be almost like a a, a donut bukkake, you know, just like just be all over it. So you need to put it inside, you need to insert it. Um, almost like impregnating the donut with jam which might sound a bit weird now I said it out loud but that's how it was explained to me by my boss um, I think at some point he did get pulled up about how he spoke to children but he was the best boss I ever had he was absolutely brilliant he was funny he was kind he was gentle um, he was brilliant really great man one of the best men I ever met so I won't say anything bad about him because there's nothing bad to say he was just lovely and I remember when I got the job I just said can I have a job and he said yeah that was it um, and when I, re- when I when I left because I mean, there's part of me wish I was still there, which is a bit strange because, you know, based on the amount of money I earned there, I'd have been living in poverty for the last 50 years. Although I kind of have at some points in my life anyway, but I've hardly been rich. That's a fact. But it was very low pay. But in the bakehouse, it was... It was nice. It was warm, sometimes too hot, but that's okay. The radio was on, so we're listening to um, "Where's My Parrot" FM or whatever, and it was it was fun. Time went quickly because it was early in the morning. You know, I got there sometimes. I think on a Sunday it was five a.m. and on a on a Saturday it was six. And on a Sunday it was five. And I didn't wake up till about 10.30. And we finished at midday. So I only really had to work an hour and a half uh, consciously. The rest of the time, I don't know what I did. I was just walking around like a like a teenage zombie, I guess. So the second favourite job was the donuts. It was okay filling them with jam. The hardest ones were the ring donuts. Because like, where does the jam go? And my third favourite job. Probably my favourite, to be fair. It wasn't my third. It's the other job. You know, this is my favourite one. Um, For different reasons. Is taking the cakes down. So, the my boss would put the cakes in these. Are they brown or red? Uh, trays like the standard baking plastic trays that bread and stuff gets delivered to supermarkets and shops and stuff like that and I would take them down the stairs there was one set of stairs and then to the left and there was another set of stairs which led to the kitchen and walk through through past the part where I would be filling the donuts with jam and then through the doors on the right because there was two sets of doors one incoming and one outgoing because it was a very busy restaurant and I'd because there was no one else around and no one had come in to start cooking yet that didn't really happen till probably, I don't know, 10, 11 o'clock or something. And I would then go, so I'd go out the door into the restaurant and walk all the way down to where the entrance was. And there was this kiosk. Well, basically, it was uh, not a desk. What do you call it? 
uh, a shop has, you know, where the till is, one of those things. But in the window, there is this whole uh, glass cabinet display unit. Now, I, I actually decided to display the stuff because I thought that's what the job was. And after that, no one was allowed to display the cakes apart from the staff selling it. So they had to start coming in half an hour early to put them out on display because apparently I stacked them all too tight. I basically just shoved all the cakes in together, squashed them all in to this big glass cabinet and managed to close the door behind. And, well, according to my boss, that wasn't the way it was done. But I didn't know any better. I, you know, I didn't, no one had trained me. I just thought that uh, when he said put them in the glass cabinet, in the display cabinet, he didn't say put them out nice or display them nicely. He wasn't specific. So I just chucked them in, squashed them all together. That day they had to rebake all the cakes. Yeah, he wasn't very really happy with me that day. But he was still kind and nice. Because he was a nice bloke. Roger, his name was. Really, really top man. And so what we did then, we just had to pile them up. like the, the Not the cakes, but the... What do they call them? I don't know what they call them. Plastic trays used to because they was they had holes in them i guess as a, like a vent for the hot cakes and bread and stuff and then they have the they're still around now i think the supermarkets still use the same kind of trays to deliver food except the difference is the ones they deliver food in had an opening at the front I like openings. And we used to stack them on top of each other. But what I could do, and it wasn't just me, I wasn't the only thief. We used to, I used to just eat cakes on the way down. And uh, I remember once, I think we perhaps got a little bit carried away, and there was only three cakes left. Uh, do we, you know, it's like, oh, oh, we did it a little bit. And Roger was saying, is any, who's had the cakes? And I said, I don't know. He said, why is there jam all over your face? Quick as a flash, I said, it was from the donuts. And he said, so you've eaten the donuts? I said, yeah. So I kind of put myself in it a little bit. Because there was no donuts either down there. Well, there's one. I dropped that on the floor, so I didn't want to eat that. So I put it back to be sold to the customers. And as I said, I was young. I didn't, I guess I didn't think about the the moral consequences of my actions. But I used to have the cakes and they were so nice. And I remember once, once... Roger was like, where you been, Jason? You've been down there for 15 minutes. It's a two-minute job. We've got stacks of cakes still, still to go down into the restaurant. And he put a lot of feeling into his voice. Like, really, they've got to go down into the restaurant. So I knew that he meant business. And I just explained to him, I thought, quick as a flash, I'll get out of this. I had to wait for the cakes to cool down before I could eat them. And then I realised what I'd said. I was like, oh, what am I doing? I mean, as far as lying goes, it wasn't, wasn't a, I wouldn't have got a good mark at school for that. Not that I ever got anything but a bad mark. I don't think I ever got a, I never got above a D in school. Not quite sure why, because 
I suppose because I'm not very clever. I can't figure it out. Huh? Maybe. So that was that job. Occasionally, he would let me put stuff into the oven, but with supervision. With supervision, he was. As I said, I'll never say a word again. Word. I won't even lie about him. I won't say a word against him because he was. He was brilliant, and I got on really well with his son as well. His son used to tease me because I was little. I was. I say probably about thirteen. His son was at that time probably about 18, 19. So not a lot older. Just counting it out on my fingers. Maybe six years older. And um, but you know, he was it was funny. And he'd he'd tease me, but not in a horrible way, you know. He was very um friendly with it. So I liked him a lot. And Roger's mum as well, she was really nice. Very pretty. And she was very friendly as well. She, I think, ran the restaurant upstairs. Because there was two levels of the restaurant. What I don't understand is how they... Because you go there now and it is a restaurant. But it's little. It's not big. It used to be huge. I mean, I worked upstairs as well because I didn't just work in a baking uh, place. Before I worked in a bakery, I worked in the kitchen doing the washing up. So we had a washing, uh, a dishwasher machine, and I would do that because they would just continuously bring in plates, like, you know, dirty plates and stuff that needed washing and I would do that a few nights a week again a good job because I generally have someone with me and we'd have a laugh you know tell jokes and talk about monkeys sometimes we like to, I like to talk about monkeys back then I quite wanted to have a monkey Little, little monkey, not a big one, but a little one. He, my friend, he wanted a big one. Like, um, what's that gorilla from uh, Clyde? Remember the Clyde? The orangutan? I was more interested in, not even Tarzan sized monkey. I like those tiny little ones. I don't mean so little that you need a magnifying glass. You'd, you'd, you know, you'd, 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 you'd lose him in a box of matches. I meant probably big enough to cuddle, because that's really what I wanted the monkey for—is to cuddle him. And then sometimes they'd ask me, "Do you want to work upstairs on a Friday night or Saturday night?" Uh, doing a washing up up there. And I'd say okay. And it was another restaurant up there. Which I didn't even know. Honestly didn't even know. And I think up there they did things like wedding. Weddings and funerals. And you know other kind of celebrations like that. And it was it was nice. It was a bit more. I would say upper class. Or just a little different. I think it was just a bit, a bit more intimate, rather than you know just general public coming in and asking where all the cakes have gone, why there's no cakes today, and you know people like that moaning. I'm just trying to think. My next. Oh, I was at school, and I used to use ovens at school because I I. I didn't have any interests as far as school goes. Didn't like any of the lessons or the teachers, apart from two. I liked my maths teacher. He was lovely, Mr. Johnson. And he was the first teacher that was really nice to me in high school. 
and showed an interest and but he he got ill and he never came back he had the most amazing hair a really fine jet black hair a little bit like um little man on the prairie do you remember that show or um motorway to heaven he had that kind of hair like long I don't think it was curly I'm pretty sure it was very straight and he had a beard big bushy beard that was also black and he was very friendly very caring very attentive and I think had I had him for all of my lessons we would have got sick of each other <laughs> now had I had him for all my lessons I think I might have actually learnt something because I just had this respect for him I guess based on how he was treating me Anyway, he he left for illness reasons, and the maths teacher after him, it just yeah went downhill from there for me, and I didn't learn anything. I didn't even learn how to do fractions. I understand fractions, uh, as far as you know, half a quarter. Three, two thirds, three thirds, all that stuff, eighth, six. I understand the concept of fractions. I just, adding up fractions, I found difficult. Now, I could, adding up easy fractions, obviously, is easy, isn't it? So if you've got one third plus one third, it's, it's, a quarter so it's easy quite easy you know thing to do one quarter plus one quarter seven eighths so you know it's 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 quite easy but you know when it came to exams I just I just struggled a little bit I mean algebra I can't spell it. And I don't understand it. But then, I never tried. I remember talking on the phone to this lady when I was uh, selling car insurance. And she said to me that when she was at school, she was an absolute... Not tart. She was an absolute... Um, what's the word? Not moron. In her words. This is her words. But she was trying to think of the word. Um, she basically... She thought... That she had no... Academic ability... Whatsoever. Especially concerning... Um, mathematics... Those weren't her words. She was a bit more like forceful with her description of her inability uh, regarding that particular subject. And then she said to me something. She said, all these years, I thought that my brain just didn't work. And then I took a course in maths as an adult. And I think she was probably in her twenties at that point that she took the course, the first course. And now she teaches maths. She realised that she did understand maths. It's just she didn't understand it the way that it was being taught to her. She realised that she understood it really well. Not only that, she actually loved it. 
it was a passion for her. And she went on, got a degree in maths. Now, I'll be honest with you. I think if I was going to really get a degree in any subject, and you're going to say, what's the hardest subject I could pick? It would be maths. But also, if I was to get a degree in any subject, what would be the biggest accomplishment of my life? Academically. Yeah, I think having a maths degree would be... It would be the biggest accomplishment, probably, of my life. Um, I say that, but... Recently, a couple of months ago, I was constipated. And when I was finally able to... uh, um, Should we just say cure myself of that constipation? That was the biggest accomplishment of my life. Some people say, oh, uh, you'll never experience uh, the bliss, uh, true, true happiness until you have a baby and you look at your baby for the first time and hold him in your arms. Well, I, I beg to I beg to disagree. I I don't think any any sense of accomplishment accomplishment or happiness will touch how I felt when I finally managed to uh, dislodge the log from my uh, colon. That was true happiness. Yeah, so, um, what other things? I'm starting to get the urge to read a book on mathematics. That's strange. It's not going to happen. So, the next instance with ovens, I worked in a chip shop. So, I, I used to use the oven to cook pies. And that was it, really. Pies and sausage rolls and... What else was it? There might have been something else. Maybe sausages, but probably not, because the sausages could be cooked in the fryers. No. Yeah, I think it's just sausage rolls and pies. Um, Nothing really happened there. I had my own oven in the first flat I had, which was upstairs, above the chip shop. That didn't get used very often. I think the next time I used an oven, really, other than in, like, just home circumstances, would be when I worked in a bakery, like a big industrial bakery. And to start with, I worked in the kitchen, uh, in the canteen. So we would use the oven a lot for, you know, making pies and sausages for the breakfast and um, all the different things. Uh, so there was a lot of a lot of oven use for cooking, and I was taught how to make a lasagna. For, by my boss who was the chef and he basically taught me how to make a lot of the bigger dishes for lunch because we were there for breakfast and then for lunch and the evening was more a sandwich kind of thing which we weren't there for because we'd be gone by five so we'd start at seven and leave about half four or five and he got me doing it so he didn't have to do anything. I didn't realise. So he just said, oh, we're having lasagna today. Get on with it, Jay. And then he'd go and he'd, he'd stand watching the fruit machine being used by all the workers from the bakery. Well, not all of them, but the ones that were using it at the time. And he always knew when the machine was ready to pay out. Because he'd wait and he'd watch 
and then he walk over when it was empty and he nearly pretty much always won and I think he probably doubled his money his wages probably just by doing that plus he didn't have to do any work because he had me doing it and then I got made redundant from that job but the bakery took me on to actually work in the bakery itself. Now that's when I really got to experience the heat of ovens because I burnt my arms continuously and my hands. Uh, it was very, very, probably the most, most difficult job I ever had physically because of the heat and everything like that. You know. But I used to burn myself. And I didn't burn myself, but I used to, the trays used to like hit my arms. And the the manager, my line manager, found it hilarious. And he said, well, you've got to learn. And I kept, you know, I had this short-sleeved top on. And then after the first week, he gave me a long-sleeved top. I said to him, why don't you give me a long-sleeved top to start with? He said, well, you need to learn how to not burn yourself. And the best way is to have a short sleeve top on. I said, but I'm scarred for life. He said, stop being so dramatic. Why are you always crying? I said, I'm not crying. I'm just saying that, you know, I've got all these scars on my arms. He said, look, they heal and they will disappear. They're just surface marks. And I said, okay. We had a bit of a cuddle and we made up and it was fine after that. I'm trying to think of other places where I've used ovens. There was an oven incident at a party where a comedian friend of mine, well, a cut, we went to a party of a couple of comedians. They invited us. They were from Australia or New Zealand, yeah, you know, Australia. And there's a lot of people there. And my friend, um, Lent back. He was he was in the kitchen. It was a kind of party that was so busy that you had to it was everywhere. You couldn't actually tell what room you were in. Plus, I didn't really know the layout. I'd not been there before. Anyway, he started screaming, and dance. Well, I thought he was dancing, but it wasn't. He'd burnt himself because someone had left the the grill on. And there was oil in the grill and the oil went all down his back. And he's still got scars now from that. And there was that. And I think he had to leave and go to the hospital and stuff. I didn't leave because I didn't want to. And then, I was trying to think what other oven things... I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I had, I've had i had normal ovens loads of times. Different places I've lived, shared ovens. I've got my own oven now. The first one I've ever actually bought. Although it was sort of six odd years ago that I bought it. It doesn't get a huge amount of use, to be honest. But the worst oven I ever had was this, the place I lived before I moved here. And it had, it was a camping oven wasn't even big enough for a pizza it was a rubbish crappy little thing that buzzed it was almost like a wind up a wind up oven you could hear it like Bzzz. honestly like at first I did think oh was a bee got in there but it wasn't a bee it was the oven Bzzz. And it was just ridiculous. It, it took probably three times longer to cook anything than it should. Sometimes, I, you know, if I was having porridge and I was cooking a porridge in the oven, it took so long, I actually have to take it with me on the bus to work. The oven. Mind you, it stopped buzzing when it was on the bus. 
because there was no electrical cords to connect. But yeah, actually that was a bit pointless really, wasn't it? No wonder the porridge didn't taste very nice. In fact, a bit cold, if I'm honest. Huh. Well, it's something new that I've learnt. So, yeah, that's my stories of ovens. I'm sure there's many stories of ovens that I've forgotten and just maybe repressed, but I can't think of any other ovens that I really uh, need to mention. So that's it. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.